I'm Papa T. I want you guys to stay alert. So I'm bringing you today's top news internationally. Stay on the international set, folks. Keep it global. Peace. A violent day in Ukraine as whatever semblance of calm there has evaporated in a hail of bricks and bullets. Protesters battled police and government snipers fired back. Estimates are dozens died today alone. Pierre Swire Sahadi Nelson is in Kiev and explains how things quickly fell apart. There never really was a truce. Um, the president's office here had announced that there was such a thing, um, and opposition leaders had welcomed it. But depending on the account you hear, it was either protesters who continued throwing firebombs and rocks at police because they were concerned that this was a ruse and that police were, in fact, were getting ready to attack, or um, some protesters are protesters I talked to say that it was in fact the police who never stopped. NPR Soraya Sarhadi Nelson, Ukrainian television shows scenes of people being gunned down and lying on the ground. Both the EU and the White House have denounced the violence there with the EU imposing sanctions on officials. A hard-fought game between U.S. and Canadian women's hockey teams in Sochi, but in the end, Canada won 3-2 to two to take the gold medal in the event, leaving the U.S. with silver. Trailing by two goals with under four minutes to play in regulation, the Canadian squad scored twice before the game went into overtime. Here's Robert Smith's in Sochi and says like past meetings, it was an action-packed face-off. This was such an intensely physical game. I mean, I'm going to read here from the list of penalties. Body checking, roughing, cross-checking, tripping, holding an opponent, hooking, and that's all from just the first period. Um, these particular squads play a very, very tough game against each other and there's lots of penalties and you know if you've seen them play before there's occasionally big fights. Switzerland beat Sweden earlier in the day to claim the bronze medal. New reports on the economy out today indicate inflation remains in check and the job market is showing slow but steady improvement. The consumer price index edged up a tenth of a percent last month. And NPR's Craig Wyndham reports the number of people filing new claims for unemployment benefits fell by 3,000 last week. Economist Gus Fauché with PNC Financial Services says new jobless benefit claims remain in the range where they've been over the past couple of months, suggesting that unusually frigid weather has not been too much of a drag on hiring. So I think it's an indication the labor market slowly continues to heal and that we will see job growth again in February, although it might be a little bit soft because of the weather. Some analysts say recent tepid economic data may signal a slowing of growth, but Fauché disagrees. I'm not really concerned about a slowdown in growth if we look at the fundamentals of the economy, they look good. Fauché expects growth in the economy this year will be appreciably stronger than it was last year. One of the nation's largest grocery store chains has announced it's putting itself up for sale. Pleasanton, California-based Safeway announcing while no agreement's been reached, negotiations are underway. The chain has more than 1,300 U.S. stores. On Wall Street, the Dow is up 92 points. According to a spokesman for the company that owns the cargo ship Maersk, Alabama, an investigation is underway after two onboard security officers were found dead in a cabin. The ship's parent company saying today an initial probe by officials in the Seychelles has determined the deaths were not related to the pair's ship duties. As a result, the ship was allowed to leave. The Maersk, Alabama is the same ship featured in the movie Captain Phillips, which became famous after a 2009 event where it was hijacked by Somali pirates. New Jersey residents frustrated with a pace of recovery after Superstorm Sandy got a chance to vent directly to Governor Chris Christie today. It was the governor's first town hall forum of his second term and the first since scandals surrounding lane closures on the George Washington Bridge. Forty Trace with Samilton of member station WHYY was there. No one asked Christie directly about the lane closures. And a question about why the state fired one of its largest contractors in the Sandy recovery went mostly unanswered. Instead, Christie, a potential presidential candidate in 2016, passed blame to the federal government for regulations he says have slowed down the distribution of Sandy funds. If the checkbook was purely at my disposal and I could review your papers personally and not have the federal government involved, you'd probably be home already. But I don't have the checkbook and I can't make these decisions by myself. He also said that because the feds didn't give the state enough recovery funds, not everyone who needs help will get it. One benefit of getting older these days, you apparently are less likely to be involved in a vehicle crash or killed behind the wheel. That's based on a study by the Institute for Highway Safety looked at drivers age 70 years of age and older.